Please stand. If you would remain standing for a moment, please. Of the world's three great institutions, the home, the church, and the state, the home is the oldest and the most sacred. In the consummation of the first marriage, the woman whom God made as a helpmate for man was not taken from his head to rule over him, nor from his feet to be trampled by him, but from his side that she might be his equal, from under his arm that she might receive his protection, and from near his heart that she might own and command his love. The relation of husband and wife is most sacred when it is that of two souls with a single thought two hearts that beat as one. It is the blending of two lives, the blending of two natures. Today, David Francis Brissett and Catherine Stephanie Selucky come in the presence of this company to be joined together in holy matrimony, which is commended by St. Paul to be honorable among all men therefore is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently 
and discreetly and soberly and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. Let us pray. Father, the day has finally come and we're grateful. We pray your blessing upon this couple, upon family and friends that are gathered around today. But Lord, may you be the special guest of honor. May your touch bless this union, this day, this marriage from the first day until the last day. So we welcome your Holy Spirit to touch our hearts right now. And we give you all thanks and praise for what you've done and what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? In honor of her father, Frank, I do. Well, Catherine and David, you finally made it to the altar. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but how quickly that time has really passed. I was thinking earlier, it was at that picnic last summer when the sparks began to fly and when love was beginning to grow. But anyway, as we start today, uh, welcome everyone. We greet you all in the name of the Lord. I think it's important to share a few thoughts about marriage. And then I want to share a few thoughts to you personally, if I may. So the first thing I'd like to share about marriage in 2024 is that marriage is a good thing because marriage is a God thing. When we look at Genesis 1 and 2, if you don't know what that is, the first two books of the Bible, we, we hear the story of creation. And everything that God made, the light, the dark, the water, the fish, the cattle, the bushes, the trees, everything was, it was good. Everything was good. But when he made man, interestingly, it says that it was not good that man was alone. So he caused him to go into a deep sleep, took his rib, and out of that rib fashioned a woman to be his helpmate, not opposite, to be compatible. And then it says, when all that was done, it wasn't good, it was, guess what? It was very good. So I like to say that because in our culture, sometimes marriage is not held up to the highest standard, but it really should be according to God's word. Secondly, I like to remind people that marriage uh, is a picture of a, a greater spiritual truth. In the Bible, uh, the husband is referred to, uh, Christ is referred to as the husband and the church is referred to as the bride. In Ephesians 5, we read, it's, we read, husbands, love your wives the way Christ loved the church. And wives, surrender to your husband's leadership. And husbands and wives, as you serve the Lord, submit to one another. This is most pleasing to the Lord. So I like to tell couples getting married that as beautiful as your marriage is, there is a greater picture involved, that you represent the Christ that you serve. That's important to remember. And uh, thirdly, marriage reminds us that two are better than one, but three are better than two. And let me explain that. In Ecclesiastes, we have this reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his, his companion, but woe to him if he is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him get up. Again, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. How can they be warm if they're alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. So we say two are better than one. But then it says something very interesting. It says a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So we have the one strand of the husband, the other strand is the wife, and the third strand is Jesus in the middle of it. And when Jesus is in the middle of it, 
you know, you, you, you recognize you, you're going to be great together. Two is greater than one, but three is greater than two. So always keep Jesus in the relationship. Amen? Amen. So at this time, uh, for those of you attending today, this is my one chance to preach to this couple one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so I'm just going to seize the moment for a, just for a little bit here and give you a little bit of hopefully godly wisdom for both of you. David, um, there's a character in the Bible that reminds me of you. Young man, came from a nice family, but he needed Jesus. His name is Timothy. Timothy um, was someone that Paul mentored, led him in the faith, and so on. Paul consistently encouraged him to continue on in his faith. I want to play that role with you and encourage you to continue in your faith. I remember the first time you came here, and I remember what you told me. You saw me pumping gas one day, a plastow, <laughs> unbeknown to me, but God was planting something there. So as Paul told Timothy, he said to Timothy, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. I'm telling you. He said to Timothy, hey, Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. You got gifts, my brother. Stir up those gifts. He said, Timothy, be ready in season and out to preach the word. Now, I don't know if you're going to be a preacher, but preach the word however you can preach it. <laughs> but may God's anointing be on you from this day forward. I would encourage you, David, as you take on the mantle of a husband, um, be a good husband. Be a faithful husband. Lead your wife in prayer. Lead your wife in the faith. And, and lead your wife in just integrity. You can, you can do this. You can do this. Catherine, I have a special word for you today. And I know you're just wanting to know who it is in the Bible that I'm thinking about. <laughs> well, Fairly well-known character, but her name is Priscilla. And I, I say that because I remember when you first started coming to the church. It was during the COVID days, and we all had the mask on. And all I could see from, from the little lady over there sitting over there, a nodding of the head and a little gleam in her eye that she was getting what I was talking about, and I knew the spirit was with you. But Priscilla, her role uh, in, the, in the church was the role of a wife, actually. Her husband was Aquila. They were helpers with Paul. They helped him make tents to make the finances needed to keep their ministry alive. So we see Priscilla supporting Paul. Uh, we see her later on as a teacher, teaching someone named Apollos. We see her opening up her home for ministry and for fellowship. And I just want to encourage you Keep yourself in the word of God. Just because you're getting married, nothing has to slow down in your faith. Can I get an amen right there, everybody? Amen. This is a time that both of you step it up and serve God with all your heart. And um, be, be a Christian wife. I know it's a new venture for you. Uh, you've heard this saying. I know this is true because it's happened in my life. Behind every good man, there's a great woman. You're the woman. So you wear that mantle well. You're a, you're a wife, a woman of God, and, and you're faithful. So continue on in, in that walking. Uh, I would encourage you to learn, grow, build your faith, build your home centered on Jesus Christ. And for both of you, I, I think if everyone, we were to take a survey, everyone would probably say, you're great people. You've done a lot of good things in your lives already. You know, you're good. You're doing good. And we're all waiting to see what's going to happen now that you're together. You're going to be more dynamite here. So continue on to, to serve the Lord together. Um, say, I love you every day if you can. I think you can. Pray together every day, and I know you can. And stay faithful to the Lord.
You've, you've done well and continue to do well. At this time, we are going to proceed with the uh, marriage pledge. And so, David, I'm going to talk to you first. And uh, if you agree to these things I'm about to say, you will say, I will. So, will you, David, have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together after God's holy ordinance and the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health? Will you forsake all others, keeping yourself only for her as long as you shall live? Catherine, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Will you, Catherine, have this man to be thy wedded husband, to live together after God's holy ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health? Will you forsake all others, keeping yourself only for him as long as you shall live? Amen. Let's just talk about words for a moment. We're going to exchange the wedding vows. I want to encourage you to feel the, the brevity of your words right here. We live in a culture where sometimes words don't mean a whole lot. People go back on their words. They forget what they say or what they promised. But today, your vows are being heard by God, by the angels, by the saints, by the company that's here today by the minister, by the church. So your words carry weight. And um, I would encourage you to think back on these words as the years go by. So if you would, David, just extend your right hand and take Catherine's hand in yours and cup it together and repeat these words after me as you speak to her. I, David Francis, Brisette, take thee, Catherine Stephanie Selucky, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, according to God's holy ordinance, I give you my love. Catherine, if you will now reverse that and take David's hand, uh, your right hand. There you go. <laughs> And um, speak to David as you repeat after me. I, Catherine Stephanie Selucky, take thee, David Francis Brissette, to be my wedded husband. I, Catherine Stephanie Selucky, take thee, David Francis Brissette, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health to love and to cherish till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance, I give you my love. And what token of love do you have for each other? Rings. Rings. Let's think about these rings for a moment. Scripture tells us that when God made a covenant with Noah, he set his bow in the cloud as a token of that covenant. He said, I will look upon it that I may remember this everlasting covenant. From this we learn that it is well for us when we enter into a solemn agreement to set aside some reminder. You have chosen these rings to be a token of your marriage covenant 
They're made of a substance which is a type of that which is least tarnished and most enduring, fittingly representing the ties that bind husband and wife. The ring, an endless circle, until broken by some outside force, is a symbol of the unbroken union, which is to continue until broken by death. So David, if you would take Catherine's ring and just put it on the tip of her finger, and um, let it be a seal of your mutual fidelity and affection in a memorial of this sacred service, and repeat these words after me as you speak to Catherine. With this ring I thee wed, and give my love and devotion, so long as we both shall live. <laughs> you would take David's ring and put it on the tip of his ring finger there and let it be a seal of your mutual fidelity and affection and a memorial of this sacred service and repeat these words as you speak to David. With this ring I thee wed and give my love and devotion as long as we both shall live. <laughs> that ring's not coming off. <laughs> well, <laughs> at, at this time, uh, David and Catherine and I are going to share communion. And so we want to encourage everyone here to take a few moments. And you have communion with the Lord right now. There'll be a special song played. Uh, if you've made a commitment to the Lord, just renew that commitment. If you haven't made a commitment to Christ, you may want to do that at this time. So there'll be a couple of minutes to reflect and think about things. If you're a married couple as well, it might be a time to kind of look at each other and just appreciate each other in a special way as we continue in the, in the service.
we're just about home. <laughs> we're just about home. For as much as David, Francis Prezet, and Catherine Stephanie Selucky have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company and have given and pledged their love each to the other and have declared the same by holding hands, reciting vows, exchanging rings. I now pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, never let man separate. Now you may kiss your bride. <laughs> You may stand, please. Let's pray. Father, we surrender this couple into your capable hands. Lord, we know this is just the beginning. And this is, a, this is a beautiful day, a beautiful service. But it's just the beginning. We pray that the same spirit that's with them right now will be with David and Catherine all the days of their lives. May their marriage be blessed and fruitful. May they touch many lives with the message of Christ. May they enjoy each other's company and just move forward in life. Thank you, Lord, for the journey that they've taken to get to this point. Bless them. Let them learn from their past, but gravitate towards the future. We thank you and we praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, let me be the first one to introduce Mr. and Mrs. David and Catherine Brissett. <laughs> Someone say it's magic But I know that you did all that You're the reason, there's no doubt Doesn't matter just how many times I try There could only be a single reason why So tell me How do miracles just happen like that? Happen like that? Happen like that? You can see the stars